So it's of course time for the final mini box before Dawnlinks' brand new world, Seven's World Rushdall comes. This is the world of Baryon, a box that has literally three Baryon cards in it. So what is the point of calling it a Baryon box? I don't really get it now. We're of course getting Utopia, we're getting Toons, we're getting BLS, we're getting Tenyes, which is a really good engine and also deck by itself. So if you play Master, play the Tenny Sword Soul, you will know they're very good. And also they can be very good going forward when we get more worm support that kind of thing, but also we're getting a bundle deal for limit 1, Draco Berserk of the Tenyi, a generic level 8 Synchro, of course limit 1 so it's fine, but Rocket will play this, it is a going first card, if summon it out, when you put it multi against effect, you can banish that card, once per turn of course, but it's some disruption, it's not a negate, but it's getting that card off their board which is really really big, and also it can attack twice, gain attack points which draws a monster, so yeah this could be pretty game ending by itself. On to the box though, and I'm going to structure this a bit differently than usual, right, I'm not going to go you are, then SR. We're going to go by what does Brad care about least, to what does Brad care about the most. And we're going to start off with Utopia. Now, they're getting a skill that does seem pretty bonkers, because of course it is, right? Utopia skills, Yuma, he is the king of OG bonkers skills, on a matter play, was one of them. And so, they're getting like a few new cards, right? It's getting your Utopia Ray V, which can return a card back to the deck when it's destroyed, and also once per turn, detach one, new card opponent controls, and then do half damage. We're getting the Giant Red Hand, a rank up course for the Giant Hand, the one from the mini box, right? We're also getting the Salamander to work with the skill. We're getting the rank up Magic Limited Baron's Force as well to again work with the skill, and a reprint of Generation Force to let you search and exceed card, but no reprint of Pyro, which would have been really, really big, but of course wouldn't have fit in a mini box anyway, so uh, that's fine. Then we've got Castell. This card is very good. A generic, rank 4, detach 1, book a moon monster, or detach 2, shuffle 1 back to deck. That is just a really good removal. It is targeting, but still a great card that will probably replace Malevolent Sin in many decks. Then we've got BLS. Now this card is funny because it just came out of Marstall like yesterday, and so it is very aptly timed, so in Duel Links, it's going to actually be playable as opposed to Master, where it's not really playable. Now, during your draw phase, before you draw, reveal this card. If you do, you can add a Ritual Spell from your deck to your hand instead of a draw, which I think is a fairly cool effect. It's not usable turn one, of course, so you can't, you know, search your Chaos Form, summon this, that doesn't work. It doesn't really matter, given we're getting a new skill for Yugi, Yugi, and Yugi, which puts a bunch of cards in your graveyard, sets your Ritual Spell in your graveyard, and then also lets you search other cards with your other ritual spells. Like it just, it does so, so much for the deck. Will it be meta? Probably not. Will it be a lot of fun, a lot better than the BLS currently is? Probably, you know, probably it will be. But that's not all the BLS does, right? It also is an Armades in the battle phase, which is pretty good. But also if you use normal monster summon this and you attack and destroy a monster, you can shuffle all cards they control into the deck. And you might think this is going to be super impossible, right? But no, because that skill we talked about a minute ago, this one, the Soul of Light Darkness, the cards out to the start of Duel, includes a mystical elf and so that's going to fill that requirement which is really really scary if going second you could just nuke their entire board away does mean that your opponent has to kind of target this get rid of it which is really easy to do but if you put it off it's going to be very very fun then we've got the tunes and they got more than i kind of bargained for we've got comic hand which is going to be stealing your opponent's monster which is really really big We've got your Tomb Bookmark, which is a searcher for a Tomb World or any card listed in the deck, but also it's protection in the graveyard. So that means now this with three Tomb Kingdom, your Tomb Table of Contents, meaning you've got five Tomb Kingdoms in your deck, which is really, really big. We've also got the Tomb Page Flip, which gets your monster out from your deck for free, given you also have the brand new skill that does give you Tomb World anytime in the duel, which is fantastic. Of course, you can play the older one. This does make it so you can almost summon up Tributing, which is even bigger in my opinion. The big card for Toons is going to be your Toon Black Luster Soldier. You summon it like Gandora, right, by tripping cards in your hand or on your field, liquid or more. And also, once per turn, target a card on the field, banish it. The card attack if you do, this is a very, very good card for Toons, obviously. And what you're seeing so far with the box is a deck type that you need three copies of literally all of these brand new cards, right? Maybe two Comic Hand, but you want three Toon Bookmark, you want three Toon Blast Soldier, and you also want three copies of every single Tenyi in this box. The main premise of Tenyis is there's no effect monster on your field, you can special summon this card from hand. This works for all the Tenyi Spirits. If you have a face-up non-effect monster, so no monster, or a link monster with no effect, 
you can activate effects in your hand and your graveyard once per turn for each one you have. And so, these can be pretty scary. So the idea is, you've got your first board, you summon out Tenyi, you link off into the SR, Monk of the Tenyi, then the graveyard effects or hand effects are now live, you can special on more, you can go for some link climbing into like a, a Shaman of the Tenyi for example, but that then locks you into Tenyis and of course has a Battle Flight effect to destroy a card in the field. You could then go into your big Link 3, Vanilla, if you wanted to as well, to get more Tenyi effects off, you want to climb into that. You can go into your Draco Master Tenyi, which is your kind of in archetypal boss for the moment. It has some protection, has non-targeting destruction of the field. The big thing is the Tenyi's other effects, right? So you've got Ashuna, you can banish it, to special summon any Tenyi you want from your deck. So it is a starter card or an extender, very, very cool. Then you've got the big one, Ashuda, a dark level seven worm that is a Book of Moon in your hand or the graveyard. And you know what? It's level seven, Dark Magician's level seven. You can technically play Tenyi Dark Magician and it, it did see some play back before we got all new support right from TCG, right before we got the Illusion of Chaos and the uh, Magician's the Soul Serpent, for example. Before we got those, this is kind of how you were kind of playing DM. And so, I am going to try it. I'm going to try it. But also, we're getting the Adara, which is going to be a recycle. We're getting the Mapura, which is a negate for a card that targets. We've got the Shathana, which can bring back a card that's just destroyed and then pop one card in the field. Pretty cool. And we've got the Nahata, which is basically a reverse honest. So again, pretty cool. Uh, these cards will see play. And especially things like Vashuda and Ashuna, these are going to change the game quite a bit, in my opinion, if not now, going forward in the future, right? Because there are these things called uh, called the Sword Soul, which work quite well with these, and eventually, these will come to Dual Links at some point, right? The big thing with the Shuna is it does lock you into Worms, so you kind of want to use a Shuna last if you have to, but also, we've got some Worm cards in Dual Links, right? We've got a, uh, a very well-known archetype called the Yang Zing, and so... You can turn one, make your Baxia with the level one tuner, which is the Adara. So they have plays they can do, right? I'm not too sure. Again, I've said they're going to be really good, but I'm not sure on the overall meta relevance of this box at the moment. At this you know, current moment in time, we've got a KC Cup. So these decks will probably see a bit more play than they would do normally. It looks like a very fun box to kind of end the world off, end Reigns off, go into Rush Duel. And we have no clue what's happening in the future, right? Also, we're getting the Vessel which is a Foolish Burial, and coincidentally, I have gems expiring, like, on the day it comes out, and up until 7 Swell drops, so I've got an excuse to go into this, and uh, I'm gonna cope, I'm gonna try and make 10 year DM work, it might just be playing for Shooter, you summon into your Link 1, you banish this, bounce card in their back row, you do your DM plays, and hopefully you survive the turn for next turn, interrupt their plays with the navigation and stuff, and hopefully it works out fine, but also, the Shooter is a archetypal out for, uh, for Dengisu, and so, it's kind of something people have been wanting for a while now, is a card like this. It's a sign of where Duel Link's Speed Duel is going, right, the Speed Duel format's going. And they're gonna diverge, of course, Speed Duel, Rush Duel, but Speed Duel is, like, going more in this TCG direction, and this is more of a sign that that is kind of happening. So, uh, so yeah, that's my long-winded off-the-cuff thoughts of the brand new mini box. It's out tomorrow, we'll do a pack opening, of course, and, uh, the sun is now making my room very dark, so I'm gonna, gonna go and hibernate. I'll see you all tomorrow for the Dawn's pack opening. See you then.